We have, both in nutrition and in general life, people that endeavor to do things without really understanding the foundation. When I was a kid, my dad told me that I needed to go, you know, get good grades in school so I could have better opportunities. And I've told my kids that and my grandkids. And then I could get a good job and I could make better money. And it was all about the money. And my life experience and my research has demonstrated that there are other factors that are extremely important in how productive and enjoyable your life really is. Otherwise, it's very frustrating oftentimes. My wife and I have been through some extremely hard times. I know there's people in this room that have been through some really hard times. And quite frankly, a lot of that is because we started trying to construct the building from the fourth floor. We started doing what my dad told me to do, and unfortunately, my dad was wrong. Loved him to death, but he was wrong. So this morning, we're going to start our presentation. I'm, I'm going to take about 15 minutes, and we're going to discuss having the right life compass settings. Just like health, success is a natural byproduct of having your thoughts and actions in alignment with the laws of nature. Attitude is the root of achievement. My mom used to say, your attitude determines your altitude in life. So first, we're going to look at something and this is coming from a number of sources of ancient literature. I'm taking a few quotes out of scripture, but these are universal principles. You can't harvest a different fruit from the seed that was planted. And the value of the seed and the quality of the ground, in this case that would be the opportunity, determines the value of the harvest. You can't expect to harvest more than the seed you planted will allow. A lot of people expect to get a lot from life, and don't put anything into it. However, a small amount of seed can produce a vast harvest. It is unreasonable to think that you can harvest any fruit if you haven't planted any seed. And it is absolutely insanity to think that you can evade the laws of nature. I think I've been quoted as saying, nature has its own laws and will never allow violation without revenge. Be not deceived, God is not mocked for whatsoever you sow. And that, in this case, that would be plant, and that includes your thoughts and your deeds. That shall you also reap, each after its own kind. The seed's going to produce a harvest. So the world is not to be put in order. The world is order incarnate. It is for us to put ourselves in unison with this order. That was quoted by Henry Miller, and that's a true statement. You cannot violate the law of the harvest and expect to be successful. You can only reap a harvest from what you've planted. Nature has its own laws and will never allow violation without revenge. I think I just heard that a moment ago. Success is not to be measured by what you accomplish for yourself, but by what you do for others and inspire them to do for themselves. You cannot succeed without helping people. That's by T. Boone Pickens. So how not to succeed? For greed, all nature is too little. That was a guy back in the time of Caesar that said that. He who loves money will not be satisfied with money. From Ecclesiastes. He who is greedy for gain troubles his own house. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So the thing you have an overwhelming desire for, the thing that you covet the most and are absolutely devoted to, it masters you. If all you want to do is make money, you become a slave to money. Money should be your servant, not your master. No man can serve two masters. You can't ride two horses in a race and win. Doing two or more main endeavors ensures that your success in either will be mediocre at best. We should be devoted to making a contribution to positively changing the lives of others. A life of serving becomes a successful servant leader. So in today's culture, more uh, money has become the primary measure of success. The obsession for money is not just to be more secure, it's an insatiable appetite. As a matter of fact, we measure um, by wealth, and oftentimes wealth is nothing more than a measure of debt in today's society. 
The number one addiction of the human species is greed. As the main measure of success, we're driven to achieve a noticeable status of success that makes us feel good about ourselves and impresses others. Yeah, look how great I am. The vast majority of people who are obsessed with money fail and or have a life of conflict and turmoil. So are the ways of everyone, not some, everyone who is greedy for gain. It takes away the life of its owners. So big, quick money can create a euphoric high, but a false sense of success. The results of research in 2011 indicate that winning $50,000 to $150,000 only postpones bankruptcy over those that won $10,000. The greater your winnings are, the more likely you are to file bankruptcy in three to five years. But you're probably thinking, man, I'd love to face that challenge. I'd like to have that option myself. Well, here's the great delusion, is that success has everything to do with what you gain or acquire for yourself, which is valued in dollars. The fact is that real success has little to do with what you gain in life or accomplish for yourself. Success results from the contribution you make to improve the quality of other people's lives, such as people like Henry Ford, Thomas Edison, James Dyson, Walt Disney, Milton Hershey, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, Andrew Carnegie, Bill Hewlett, Hewlett and Packard, Larry Page, the guy that created Google. These people had a profound impact on proving, improving the quality of other people's lives, serving them. Now that may not have been some of their motivation from the get-go, but that's what their result was. So they get to harvest the fruit because they made a contribution to making our lives better. All of these people made a lot of money by improving the lives of people. Henry Ford, by the way, and others, recalls that the best time in his life was when he was working and didn't have all that money. He stated that the money brought him misery. But how do I make money and avoid these pitfalls and still be happy? Well, you contribute valuable life-enhancing products or services and reap a harvest proportional to the value and time of your contribution. So get-rich-quick schemes, which are all over the place, are all greed-driven. They're not contribution-driven. They're self-centered. I want it. I want a lot of it. And I want it now. It's the prime motivations. These schemes deceive people in their appeal to greed and the potential for getting rich quickly. The pursuit of quick wealth is the shortest route to poverty. The plans of the diligent lead surely to plenty, but those of everyone not some, not a few, who is hasty, surely to poverty. A man with an evil eye, evil eye hastens after wealth and does not know that poverty will come upon him. I mean, the evidence is so overwhelming and it's ancient. It's time tested. The generous soul will be made rich and he who waters will also be watered himself. So success is not an event. It is the fruit of a habitual lifestyle and habitual thinking. So get your thinking right. As the head goes, so goes the body. Success is about the kind of person you want and need to be in order to make the greatest contribution. The law of the harvest is an unavoidable and irrevocable universal truth. Success requires faith, which is to believe what you do not yet see. The reward for this faith is to see what you believe. So what would you do different if you only had a month to live? How would you make your life count? Why wait? Live life like that now. Make your life count now. Be a great contribution. Not just make a contribution. Let your life be a great contribution toward improving the lives of others. So the lesson in this is genuine lasting success and happiness is not the result of being self-centered. Genuine lasting success and happiness is the fruit of being others-centered, making a contribution to improving the quality of other people's lives. Make this your mission. It is the best life compass setting. But to ensure real lasting success, make sure the foundation, don't start from the fourth floor, of your mission is solid and strong because the endeavor cannot be successful if the foundation is weak. Two houses can be built to be and look the same. However, one is built on solid rock and the other is built on sand. When the storm comes, the house built on rock will stand, the house built on sand will fall. 
because it doesn't have a strong foundation. Once the storm comes, it's too late to do something about the lack of a solid foundation. Many opportunities look and feel the same as VNI. But the essence of VNI is truth, integrity, and dependability. VNI has invested in patented and patent pending product technology, solid scientific validation, and regulatory compliance. The VNI Foundation is solid, it is strong, it is excellent. You have a great seed. Please plant it, share the message, because it will flourish and produce an abundant harvest of health, hope, and abundance. VNI is people centric, uh, it's other centered, product driven, and science based providing you a solid foundation to be the brightest beacon of health, hope, and abundance. So remember, V&I will never compromise your identity or your values. What you think about yourself, your fear of talking to other people because you might be embarrassed, will never put that at risk. You can have a positive attitude about your V&I mission and its harvest. Your attitude determines your altitude. Thank you, Mom. Thank you all. <laughs>